Good morning, everybody. My name is Lilia McEnany, and I am an assistant curator at the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture Laboratory of Anthropology in Santa Fe. And as you all know, we're here to continue our fantastic lecture series surrounding our current exhibition, Clearly Indigenous Native Visions Reimagined in Glass. So to begin, I'd like to briefly acknowledge the place where this conversation is happening, at least on my end, and even though we are in a virtual space today and not physically at the museum, in Ogopoge within the Tewa world. As a non-Native person living in so-called Santa Fe, I am a guest in the ancestral homelands of the Tewa people. And I wish to acknowledge all of the indigenous communities, people and communities, Pueblo, Diné, Apache, and so many others, past, present, and future, who walk on these lands and steward this place. And I, I would encourage everybody listening here today to think about um, the lands on which you reside. So I'm so pleased to be joined this morning by Larry Avacana and Tony Hohola. Um, starting in the 1970s, Larry and Tony were part of the first generation of native glass artists, which is why we are so excited to have them in conversation with us here today. Both are teachers and educators. Both were associated with the Institute of American Indian Arts and both influenced countless, countless other native artists to work in the glass medium. So as usual, a recording of this program will be made available on our YouTube channel in the coming weeks. So keep an eye out on our Facebook page and monthly newsletter for that link and announcements about other upcoming programs. So Larry and Tony, again, thank you for joining us. Um, so to kick us off, I think um, for the viewers who maybe don't know you, why don't we start with brief introductions? Um, who you are, where you're from, what you do. And Larry, I'll ask you to go first. Okay. <clears throat> My name is uh, Lawrence Avakana, or they call me Larry. I'm uh, Inupiat, Inupiat from uh, Utkavik, which is uh, a village uh, used to be called Barrow, and the farthest village in uh, Alaska north and uh, on the Arctic Ocean, uh, the Beaufort Sea. And so I was raised um, until I was about five, six uh, in Barrow, and then uh, then uh, raised in Anchorage uh, at the end of that time, and and went to school in schools in uh, Anchorage. And uh, my introduction to uh, art was uh, through the Institute of American Indian Arts in 1966. I went there. Uh, and uh, was uh, graduated in uh, 68 and uh, studied under uh, Alan Hauser and Fritz, Fritz uh, um, and also uh, many other teachers there. I took a lot of different classes. Fritz Shoulder was uh, one of the main persons that uh, I took classes with also. And um, then uh, after uh, graduation, I stayed there and, and went to the um, um, College of uh, Santa Fe for uh, a, a part of the time a year and then uh, studied, uh, studied there mostly uh, just uh, academic uh, classes and then, uh, then took uh, art classes at the Institute at the same time. Then um, I was uh, I, I uh, went to the Cooper Union School of Art in New York, and uh, I uh, studied under uh, different artists there, uh, basically just uh, uh, studio art, uh, painting and drawing things like that, uh, maybe introductions to arts, and uh, <clears throat> during that time. Uh, I went to the Institute for uh, a couple weeks and uh, to, uh, to do some studying with uh, Alan Hauser. And uh, at that time, I met uh, uh, a representative from the Rhode Island School of Design. And uh, he convinced me to, uh, to uh, uh, change uh, college and, and go to the uh, Rhode Island School of Design, RISD, they call it. And uh, so I was there in uh, 1970. And uh, that was uh, in the fall of 69, I went to uh, Cooper Union and then uh, 
Then uh, 1970 in the fall, I went to the Rhode Island School of Design. And uh, I was in the uh, more of the sculptural department and uh, studied under uh, uh, several artists that were uh, in, in the sculpture department and uh, took uh, basic uh, art classes also, paint, uh, drawing basically, and, uh, and also ceramics. And uh, at the ceramic studio, I was, um, uh, people were telling me there was a glass studio in the glass in the building, and I uh, went upstairs. It's it's the top of the building. There's a uh, was a the glass studio at the uh, RISD, and uh, I walked in and watched uh, them work uh, with glass. Uh, that was my introduction of understanding. I, I've never uh, the only time I've ever uh, it was introduced to glass with a glass of water or, or just just materials, you know, of glass and 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 objects of glass and of uh, everyday or everyday materials. So, um, uh, and and um, uh, uh, Dale Chihuly came up to me and asked me. Uh, would you like to try it? Uh, would you like to come and, and work in the studio? And I said, sure, I'll try it out. And, uh, and so I um, um, uh, went into his class. And, uh, and also at that time, uh, there was uh, several artists that uh, were in, um, we're doing uh, more of the uh, teaching of the glass. And so I was introduced to the many other glass artists there who, who were uh, at least, uh, I think, uh, in their uh, senior year or, or they were doing uh, uh, their master's degree in glass. <clears throat> and uh, I worked uh, you you have to be in a team to really work with glass, and uh, I was that was my first time working with other people together to to form a, a glass, you know, just to uh, form objects in glass, and uh, so I, I worked there for at least uh, I think a, a couple of years, uh, a year and a half in glass. Uh, and then um, uh, introduction of how to build uh, furnaces and uh, and the uh, the uh, the working of glass uh, the the movement of of the material and also uh, Dale uh, was working on some uh, sculptural material also in glass using uh, neon. Um, uh, and uh, blown forms and then uh, 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 bombarding it with uh, neon and uh, doing also uh, um, tubes of neon with uh, uh, he'd uh, 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 in, in put them into um, um, ice, large ice pieces. So he did a show uh, at uh, one of the um, uh, galleries within the uh, Rhode Island School of Design and, and did his master's uh, degree in, in glass and uh, did these shows uh, with, with neon and, and with ice. And uh, it was just amazing. It was, it was just uh, mind blowing how you can relate ideas with uh, glass and other materials. And so uh, that was really a, uh, an introduction to me. And that was in, I think it was in uh, 1972. I graduated from the Rhode Island School of Design and then I got a, uh, a grant from the national, no, uh, what is it? Uh, a grant from, uh, and so to put on a, uh, to set up a glass studio 
in Barrow, Alaska. So that was with Calvick. And so um, in the, I think the fall of 73, I, I, uh, we put a uh, studio together there and um, I was uh, held by uh, Bruce Chow, who was the uh, teacher at the uh, at Rhode Island, and in Glass, and he became the the um, professor of Glass there at uh, Rhode Island. But uh, him and I put the Glass Studio together in Barrow, and and did uh, a session in glass there until the um, the furnaces were on a base and uh, it uh, the base underneath was just gravel and permafrost. And so the, the studio melted the permafrost and, and it changed the angle of the uh, furnaces. So we had to completely, I had to completely shut it down and, and I was teaching uh, the high school at that time with glass. And uh, so we shut it down and, but it was a, a nice uh, experience uh, working with glass or with uh, native other, other native artists uh, or students uh, of the high school age, you know. And uh, this is one of the, pieces that uh, I did there. We did some colored, different colored glass. And so this is the piece I did there. And uh, so I think that was uh, the uh, end of glass at that time. And then uh, several years later, uh, I got uh, to uh, the Institute of American Indian Arts uh, wanted um, me to come and be a, a sculpture instructor there, and of uh, sculpturing and uh, also in introductions of glass there. And at that time, I think Dale uh, Chihuly and, and and a group of uh, artists uh, from the from RISD uh, uh, set up a studio there, but I wasn't there at that time. And I think uh, uh, Tony is the one that uh, can tell you about that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that was a wonderful story and um, really insightful into hearing how you moved all across the country, just honing this craft in a really unique way from Alaska to Santa Fe to Rhode Island, back to Santa Fe. Um, so Larry, I, I mean, Tony, I'm going to pose the same question to you um, uh, and go ahead. Okay. Well, I am from Isleta Pueblo, New Mexico, one of uh, 19 Pueblos here in New Mexico, or the southernmost Pueblo. Um, my, my start, I guess, is... Um, um remembering like on my on my grandma's <clears throat> my grandma on my dad's side she was a potter and she does and she did weavings too but mostly potter pottery um but my only uh recollection of that is uh, collecting cow dung for the firings and um but it was i think my most influential person was my grandpa on my mom's side he was a, a wood carver, a jeweler. So he worked with uh, silver and gold filigree. Um, he was generating his own um, electricity for his tools back in the 30s. And um, um, I, I was raised down there. And so I used to watch him a lot, you know, pouring silver, stretching silver, pouring gold. Um, uh, he added this blower in his little forge, so I'd I'd um, I'd work that while he was pouring and stuff. And I think I think when I think about it, um, that's I had that uh, desire to to be self sufficient like him and work with my hands, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, anyway, uh, in high school, uh, I was kind of a I guess a problem student um, and my only classes that I really excelled in was ceramics and photography. Um, I got kicked out of high school at uh, I think 11th grade and then uh, I got shipped off to the Institute 
um, cause it's a boarding school, right? So, um, getting there, um, you know, being introduced to so many different kinds of mediums and, and finding glass, um, was, was really, um, that was, that was it for me. Um, it was, it was, uh, Carl Ponka who had started the studio because, um, Dale had gotten a show there at the Institute in 1969. And I think it was in 71 when, uh, the furnace as gratitude, he put a, he made a little small little furnace and, um, got this old ceramic kiln and it was put in this barn. Um, and that's where it sat for till 75 when, um, um, I think it was, yeah, 75 when Carl, uh, had started up, but he knew very, the very basics, but we were still working it. And after that, I don't, I forget what happened to Carl, but Larry took over and it was Larry that, um, uh, encouraged me to, to go to the Pilsen glass school. Um, so it was in, that was in 75, 76 in 77, I got, a um, uh, the scholarship to go to the Haystack Mountain School of Crafts in Maine and, um, studied there, went there for six weeks and, um, luckily studied under Bruce Chow, which was, that was cool. Um, and it was then that I really knew that I, this is what I wanted to do. You know, after trying, um, other mediums, um, jewelry, photography, painting, drawing, it was, I mean, the drawing has always helped, of course. Um, but just, um, just realizing that I wanted to, if one could get good with the glass, one wouldn't have that much competition. And so that was my biggest, um, uh, push, I think. Um, so going to Pilchuck, I, I got accepted to Pilchuck and that was in, in 1978 and um immediately hit it off with dale because he was an early early person and i'm a i'm an early person also so i go down there and watch them work they start at four o'clock in the morning um and before i knew it i was doing stuff on the team um so and in 79 they asked me to if i'd be driver for the school so i went up there and worked 79 80 and 81 during the falls and summers, uh, um, as driver. So getting, getting, the uh, what would I say? Getting the experience of seeing all these internationally known glass people coming to Pilchuck. See at that time it was called the Pilchuck glass center. It was a place where, um, these artists would just get together from all over the world or wherever. And we'd share ideas and we, we all cooked together. We all made our own little dwellings, um, cause it's part of a tree farm. But, um, anyway, so that was, that was really, really good experience. And, you know, it, it was just, it was just good timing, um, being introduced to all these masters, masters, um, in the field. Um, so I think that was, that was, uh, a big start for me. Um, and, but being in, being associated with Dale, um, after finishing working, I stopped working for Dale in 81. Um, but I was kept in contact and, um, would go up to, to Seattle and make work, um, periodically at, uh, Benjamin Moore studio in Seattle. Um, so that went on but I was kept in contact with Dale and he would always call me if they needed help. Um, so I, I became working with, um, when I helped out with the Venetians. I don't know if you know that series of work, but, um, the Venetians, we did the Venetians, uh, 90 or is it uh, yeah, 90, 91, 89, 90, 91, I think something like that. Um, working with Lino Talia Pietra, who was, who headed the team doing the Venetians. Um, doing the Venetians, you have a team of probably anywhere from 10 to 15 people working at the same time. Um, 
So that was uh, quite an experience in that sense also. Could you describe um, what the Venetians is for those in the audience who might not know it? Uh, the Venetians are like uh, this, say, picture like a big vase form with these um, uh, lilies or leaves coming off the form. Um, some of them can be, oh, maybe three feet tall um, by maybe, say, 18 inches wide. I mean, there's, there's some big forms that we were doing for Dale. But um, um, anyway, that's kind of uh, how I started or um, got to go, you know, do all that stuff. Um, then coming back um, later on after we did all, the, all of that sort of thing, I was um, uh, approached to teach in Tacoma um, for these uh, troubled youth. Um, it was called the uh, Artisan Residence Program. And so I, I got there and worked with these kids, the kids that um, school district didn't uh, care for anymore. Uh, we were feeding them. We were giving them education. Um, and it, working with these young, youngsters, it was, it was one way of getting to them because the glass um, really intrigued them. And um, so... We were using the we were, we were using the material to get to the students, um, and it worked. Um, and so I did that for a couple of years, and um, I wanted to come back home. I wanted to come back home, and at the time, uh, the director, her name was um, Kathy Kaparik, she wanted a different something to do or another project. Call it a project. Um, so we we got together and um, she wanted to start something down in New Mexico and I wanted to move back home. So it was Northern New Mexico is where I wanted to, where I wanted to be, which was Taos. And um, so we started, we started negotiations um, to work in Taos. Um, originally it was supposed to be for Taos Pueblo we got as far as as uh, negotiating with the tribe or the council, and they allotted us um, some property, and we were gonna we were gonna do it. But because of Taos Pueblo, their administration changes on a yearly basis. Um, so to put that sort of money into a facility, which was going to be very expensive. Um, um it wasn't worth it plus they wanted it just for taos pueblo where um kathy and i and dale um we wanted it um we were kind of mimicking the program in in uh, tacoma and we were for all peoples so we didn't we didn't go that route with with uh, with taos pueblo instead we found another facility in town um, called TCEDC. Uh, it's a, 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 how would you say? It's a facility where they try and um, um, promote entrepreneurship kind of thing. Anyway, so we worked there. I, I worked there and um, uh, teaching the at-risk kids and still um, taking care of the kids on the for, uh, from the Pueblo, uh, mostly little ones, uh, grade school. And um, so that's what we were doing. And I ran that program for, oh, like 13 years, something like that. Um, but it was a lot, a lot of work. Um, anyway, so that's kind of where I'm at now is... Now I'm not teaching anymore um, and more trying to uh, focus on myself and, um, you know, uh, make work when I can. Great. Um, again, thank you for sharing all of that. There are so many things in what you both said that I want to expand on. Um, and I feel like we could talk about this for hours, but um I would like, Larry, you did show a piece that's behind you. Um, 
And I was wondering if I could ask you specifically about that piece. And maybe we could talk a little bit about what your creative process looks like and what actually making glass art looks like for you. Okay. Uh, uh, when we were at uh, the Institute and teaching there with Tony, Tony and I basically, uh, there was a few others that were there. But Tony and I started uh, working together as a team, and uh, we had uh, white uh, uh, glass uh, that we're working with, and uh, not clear glass at that time. And uh, we we uh, basically just uh, just tried to make different things uh, that I wanted to to try a more sculptural material which uh, I don't know if the Institute uh, still has those, those pieces, you know, I can't remember where I, you know, I might've just left them. And so, but this piece is, uh, and uh, was a uh, uh, material that we caught in, in, uh, in Barrow, uh, uh, it was a red glass that I, that I purchased and also clear glass from a company. And, uh, and so I was working with the red glass and uh, just making different objects. And in the show, there's a, um, uh, there's a, um, um, a scorpion that I did in Barrow and um, trying to uh, make a sculptural uh, form out of the glass instead of using a utilitarian form like this. And also using chemicals. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is silver nitrate that I use to uh, make these lines within the, the, the vase. And so uh, at that time, uh, after, after, after I, uh, uh, turn, uh, you know, stop the uh, studio and everything and, and took it all down and uh, shipped the material to uh, another artist in Anchorage. And uh, I think he put a studio together with it. And so, uh, but uh, after, uh, uh, after teaching, that was uh, in 73, 74. And so uh, I went to the inst Institute in 77 so with Tony, and then I stayed there for three years and then uh, moved to, uh, moved to uh, Suquamish, Washington. Uh, my ex-wife uh, is Suquamish. And uh, so I started going to the, uh, at the uh, um, Pilchuck School. Uh, at that time, I'd take a few classes there and then I was teaching a, a, a uh, uh, beginning class at uh, the Pratt uh, uh, Pratt uh, workshop in in Seattle, and they had a, they have a uh, glass studio at, at Pratt, and so for uh, for about six months I was uh, there uh, teaching teaching for a little while. And then uh, taking classes uh, once in a while at, uh, at Pilchuck, I was introduced to uh, kiln forming. So I started um, kiln uh, glass uh, fusing, basically. And that, that's what I'm still doing is glass fusing. And uh, this is a ladder that I did out of glass. And, but uh, that's what I've been doing basically is, is fusing glass and uh, using a company that uh, basically is uh, uh, materials for fusing uh, and also blowing uh, uh, colors or using colors, uh, Bullseye Glass Company. And, uh, and because you have to use a, a, a the base of glass, you have to use uh, that type of glass or else uh, you can't uh, okay. combine other glass together or else uh, they, they're, they're uh, coefficient of, uh, of, the, uh, of the glass itself is, is different in different companies. And so you have to use uh, one basic type of glass to, to work with. And, excuse me? Compatible. 
compatible work, uh, compatible glass. And so uh, uh, I have a kiln and uh, right now I'm not doing any glass because uh, I moved to Alaska and uh, I don't have a studio for glass. Uh, but I do, I'm also a, a wood carver and a stone carver. And uh, I've been doing that since uh, the beginning of uh, working with, uh, with uh, uh, stone carving with, um, at the Institute. And so and then I started working with wood too. So that's what I've been doing now is uh, doing some commissions in wood and also commissions before uh, I moved uh, in glass uh, and I did a project at, uh, in, uh, in uh, Barrow, um, uh, the uh, library. And uh, I think uh, there's some images in the show about the, uh, the, the work I did there. It's 27 feet long and uh, I think it was like, uh, 14 panels. 14 panels. Uh, my wife is over here, Donna, and uh, she's kind of coaxing me a little bit on. <laughs> so. Fantastic. Um, Tony, I am going to um, ask you as well um, about your creative process, and I'd love to hear more about the influence of your grandfather. I know that he, um, you incorporate his jewelry making tools sometimes into your work. Can you speak a little bit about that? Mm, yeah, I mean, um, uh, like I have all his stamps because he, he, um, he, he made all his, his tool or he made all his stamps for one. Um, so I, I kept a lot of um, the bigger stamps that like say he would use for uh, console belts because the, the finer, finer other stamps were too, um, the, the, the lines would, would disappear um faster with a with a smaller stamps of course you know um on the, on the glass so the the bigger ones uh, i still use to this day um just putting a little bit of of him on some of the pieces kind of it's kind of cool or uh, nice idea anyway yeah it's so interesting to hear both of you talk it's so clear the influence that other mediums have had on both of you and the way that you're thinking about glass and um Larry I'm very sorry to hear that you don't have a studio right now um but I'm excited to see um your work in stone and wood and um sculpture and all of that so um yeah, that's just been a really interesting that thread for me and hearing how the two of you are thinking about your work. And another huge thread for me that's come up um, is teaching and mentorship and inspiring other artists. It's clear mm -hmm. that um, teaching and being in educational institutions have been hugely influential on both of your careers and your lives. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about these perhaps a new perspective um on art or glass that teaching has offered you uh for who, who are you asking asking Larry, Both of you. Larry you go first <laughs> uh I think uh in the in the realm of uh of being native artists uh you look into uh your your past um um uh, traditions, I think, uh, to inspire you to uh, work with different materials that uh, come along like glass to uh, emulate some of the uh, objects that, uh, that are uh, traditional or, or they're spiritual, they're, they're, um, they're uh, an integrated, in, integrated um, into, the, into the culture. And uh, these objects are, are very, very, very uh, oh, uh, stunning and, and, and beautiful and, and wanting to, uh, uh, to do your own ideas in, 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 in a uh, um, traditional or, uh, or, or a uh, uh, spiritual form from, from older pieces that inspire you. And so I do a lot of masks, uh, and uh, these masks are are of my own uh, my own uh, ideas. And uh, but I 
I get the uh, I get the inspiration from older pieces. So you're you're you have um, as a as a Inupiaq, uh, uh wailing with my father, you know, being part of the culture uh, when I was um, at when I was uh, teaching glass in Barrow, and uh, and which I didn't have uh, a lot of. Uh, introduction or living with uh, tradition because uh, being raised in Anchorage is a you know is just a, a large city and so you never had uh, I never had uh, the uh, introduction of, of living it day to day in a village and being with your culture so that's one of the reasons why I uh, try to uh, uh, be a part of my culture by through my art and that inspires me to to uh, keep going in the arts and also with the glass fusing I try to uh, uh, put in um, traditions of contemporary traditions of uh, of parka making and um, the they call it uh, the uh, the trims around the parkas and try to emulate uh, some of the uh, geometric designs in glass from those and so uh, I think uh, you know that was my direction and still is my direction in in uh, my work is uh, and in teaching uh, I have I stopped teaching but uh, once in a while I uh, there's some programs in, in Barrow that uh, 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 had a group of us go to different villages and uh, show uh, some of the people uh, different crafts uh, and different uh, ideas of art and different directions in art, not just, con uh, not just the traditional forms, but also contemporary work. And uh, that was, you know, like, uh, for a week, uh, week uh, stays, and then uh, staying in the village, that really helped me to to see um, that uh, art is uh, very uh, uh, minimal in the in the villages, except for the uh, the traditional work, and so not really a lot of contemporary uh, ideas are flowing through through these villages, and so I. Uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, I still uh, tried to uh, to um, continue the glass because it helps to to um, give you another idea of, uh, of tra traditional ideals into a form, a different form, and so uh, and also uh, stone carving is a, uh, I use basically uh, uh, Italian style carving. So it's, it's, it's not just uh, working with uh, soapstone. Uh, I work with uh, marble and uh, limestone and alabaster and try to, uh, to do more contemporary work uh, with that material. But, but using uh, the subject is more traditional uh, ideals. I hope that that explains a little bit of of that of what I'm doing. Absolutely, uh, Tony. Uh, well, um, when I when I one thing that I've always tried to do in 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 working the glass was try to show the uh, the possibilities with the glass. You know, um, so when I was working. Um, and I forgot to include this also, but um, I did I did a, a six months at this place called the CGCA, the Creative Glass Center of America, which is in Millville, New Jersey. And there, uh, it was a it was a scholarship or a, a fellowship. Anyway, um, in when I was there for the six months, I made two thousand forms. All right, brought back two thousand forms. Um, it's a place where you can have 24 hour access to the facility. And so I was doing electroform pieces. I was casting, I was drawing on pieces. 
I was um, uh, making marinis, doing, trying to just show and, uh, all kinds of possibilities, um, stenciling the glass, to sandblast, doing all. Um, so that's always been, back then, it was trying to show all the possibilities because, I mean, we have so many tribes that are still left in the States. And each one of these tribes has a lot to offer or to show or to share um, in glass. And they'll all be different. So that was that was a big thing in in me and trying to um, trying to get something going. And we did, you know, um, Larry's encouragement back then um was was a big one for me because it changed you know changed my life because I went to Pilchuk I hit it off with Dale and it's just a big kind of a big circle but um in the whole process the um showing the possibilities um I think has worked because when I started and I mean Larry was already doing it but there was like five of us and I was the only one from down here um, and now there's, I think there's like, uh, I don't know how many glass, um, native glass artists we have, you know, it's like in the twenties, I think. But, um, so I, in that, in that sense, um, um, I think we've accomplished, um, a lot in, in getting this sort of call it a, um, native glass movement going. Um, I don't know. That's uh, kind of what I have to say about that. Yeah. And I think um, your point about showing the possibilities in Herod and Glass is so important. And it's really not something that I think a lot of people think about and why this exhibition at Mayak is so important. Um, yep. Just the the variety of forms and messages and intents and all of the different pieces are so wonderfully varied. Um, it's a really and there's, all the, there's, there's just so much to make. There is so much to make. One, one can never ever uh, complete all the things he has in his head. I, to me, anyway. Do you feel that way, Larry? Oh yes, uh, I still have. Uh, I still draw a lot, so I, I have drawings of uh, glass pieces that I want to make. You know, and and especially with blown glass, I have some uh, some ideas from uh, from old tradition that I wanted to do in glass and still want to do it. And, and I hopefully uh, Tony and a while, Tony and I will get back together again to do some things and together. You know, it. you know, it, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you know, one artist, you know, is uh, I met at Pilchuk along with uh, knowing Tony there when I was taking some classes was uh, Preston Singletary. And him and I talked, uh, you know, uh, about glass and about tradition. And I told him, you know, that uh, in his uh, Clinket tradition, you know, that he, you, you, have to, uh, you have to be uh, uh, true to your traditions and true to your, your, your place of, uh, of uh, of being and so him and i talked about that a lot and he's continued that uh, that tradition of uh, of uh, of his uh, from from the wood woodwork you know the the images that they use for dance and for uh, the the uh long houses they have and and also uh in um in suquamish um, my ex-wife is Suquamish, so they lived in longhouses, and and they have uh, the, the Salish tradition, which is not uh, completely uh, different than uh, northern uh, people, uh, northwest people, and so uh, each one is starting to bring out their own traditions and uh, through glass and uh, through other materials. And uh, it's just amazing that uh, um, the scope of work that's being done now, and uh, and I'm I'm so um, so uh, um, 
proud uh, of uh, uh, knowing these people and just just to just to continue my work and they inspire me a lot and uh, I think that's that's the the direction I want to still go on. Yeah, and I think it must just be kind of incredible incredible for both of you to see the way that the field has progressed since the 60s oh, yeah. and the 70s. It must just kind of be mind-blowing when the two of you get together to rehash all of it and see the amazing young Native artists creating this incredible work based on the foundations that you laid. Right, right. And, uh, and also uh, the interplay with artists that do not blow glass do not make the glass themselves, but uh, are incorporating uh, glass artists like Tony to help them make their images in glass. So they're not uh, um, stymied by, uh, by the, uh, the, the working of glass is very, very hard and very, you have to work it for many years to understand it to work with it and to make something out of it. So you have to be uh, continually working with it. And um, are there artists that are working in, in ceramics or uh, working with wood? Uh, they, uh, they need, their objects uh, have to be uh, very fine and very, uh, very, um, um, uh, what is it? Um, work very well you know and and bring out the ideas that they want to want to show and make and so there has to be a team that is very professional to work with and tony knows that and he's worked with it and uh, worked with many other artists to bring out their work in glass so that's another uh, venue of uh of glass that are, is is happening now with the, with the native artists. So. Yeah, and that was a thread that came up a lot during this conversation is the importance of collaboration and working with other yep. artists. So Tony, can you speak a little bit more about that? Uh, well, I mean, it's uh, I, I kind of get that from from Dale because you know um, more hands. If you have more hands involved in it, you can do more. Um, yes, there's, there's, there's stuff that you can do by yourself, but, um, and in reality, if you have, if you have, um, um, other, other hands in there that know what they're doing, uh, you, so much more can be done because everything's got to be done just right. If it's not done just right, right time, um, it doesn't work, you know, it's, um, so when you have when you have um, good people, you make good work. Um, that's kind of basically what it what it comes down to. I mean, Dale's he's a he's a he's like a conductor. You know, he gets he gets the orchestra together and he conducts, and um, he gets people that are good at what they do, and um, and you're gonna get good work. And um, he he capitalized that I, on that I think a long time ago, um, and that's that's been a, a a big thing for me, you know. Uh, you get good people, you make good work. But anyway, that is a good motto. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have about five minutes left here. Um, but to kind of wrap up here, um, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, do you have any current projects um, that you're excited about? Larry, I know you're working more in stone and wood. Um, so Tony, do you have anything that you're working on right now? In particular? Mm, well, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, um, um, I got a few things going on. Uh, um, I got this big picture, a big uh, necklace I'm doing. It's, it's 72 inches long. Yeah. Um, it's got a steel cable that goes through it, but I'm, I'm trying to, uh, it's kind of my, my version of a squash blossom, uh, necklace. Um, so I'm kind of working on that, but, um, I was just thinking about what I want to make or different little things, you know, um, uh, day after tomorrow, I'm going hunting for on a, on a Oryx hunt. Uh, but last Two years ago, my my nephew he got an oryx, 
And after he did that, I wanted to do these skulls. So I, I did a couple skulls with um, Ira Luhan, and um, I work with Ira uh, quite a bit. We've been working together for about, oh, more than 20 years now. But um, um, anyway, so I did, uh, we did this uh, couple of skulls, uh, oryx skulls. I put um, um, uranium, a uh, white over uranium, so you can it'll light it, you can light it up, you know, with a, a black light. Um, so doing skulls, you know, trying to do some skulls, um, um, deer skulls, oryx skulls, different um, stuff like that, um, sculptural things. Um, I'm kind of working on a couple comical things too. I'm making some um, jackalopes that I'm going to mount on the on the wall. <laughs> But uh, those are, they're just, they're coming together. But um, you'll see, you'll probably see those. But yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. Great. I will keep an eye out for those for sure. I would love to see the squash blossom in particular. <laughs> um, Larry, how about you? Yes. Uh, I'm, right now I'm, I'm starting on a uh, four foot mask uh, for, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, sea Alaska. In Juneau, they're they have a uh, they're building a, a museum, I guess, or uh, exhibition space, and uh, they wanted uh, five artists uh, from the different regions in Alaska to uh, to do a mask, and so I'm doing a uh, more of a whaling uh, uh, ceremonial mask that is a uh, very old uh, very old tradition in in uh, in our uh, whaling societies but uh, it's been lost uh, for a long while in in dance and uh, so i'm doing uh, uh, this image right now for that and then they're going to i'm doing it out of uh, red cedar and um, then they're going to uh, do a bronze of that piece, one bronze, and they're going to put it outside of the building for the bronze. And then the original piece will pieces will be inside uh, the museum. So uh, that's what I'm starting on right now. And uh, I just finished uh, several commission pieces, one of them for uh, uh, a gallery uh, in uh, Paris. And so uh, I'm, I'm showing some pieces in, in Anchorage also uh, in a gallery in Anchorage. Uh, so I'm keeping busy uh, working with uh, basically wood, you know, right now. Sounds like you're both keeping extraordinarily busy. Um, <laughs> so we are about out of time here. Um, it has been so much fun to chat with two such close friends. It is just a joy. I appreciate being able to um, talk with and talk and learn with both of you. Um, and I really appreciate you spending the time to chat with my audiences about the evolution of glass flowing in Indian countries. And thank cool. you for tuning in. And thank you, Tony and Larry.